Welcome back. Well, I never am unamazed. I'm always amazed by how Democrats manage just to brazen it through whatever the scandal is. My jaw dropped a few months back when it was Ralph Northam, the governor of Virginia, who was in a photo, and I'm not quite sure which one it was, if it was him in the Klan outfit or him in blackface. Either way, not a good look for someone from Virginia. Well, he toughed it out, and he remains the governor of Virginia. We've seen the same in our own country here. Justin Trudeau basically admitted to sexually assaulting Rose Knight in Creston, B.C. But when he was asked about it, he just said, well, she experienced it differently. Remember that? This lesson that we are learning, in, and I'll be blunt about it, often a man experiences an interaction as being benign or not inappropriate, and a woman, uh, particularly in a professional context, can experience it differently, and we have to respect that. Which is why the news that Governor Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York State, has been found by a Democrat attorney general to have systematically harassed and groped women in his orbit, I am quite certain that he'll weather the storm as all leftists do, deny nothing, explain nothing, just keep on trucking and what's the media going to do after a day or so. Uh, I uh, want to show you a little bit of that. And remember, this is the man that Joe Biden was seriously considering making his attorney general a man whose daily press conferences about the pandemic won him an Emmy Award, a man that pundits on the left said turned them into Cuomo sexuals. Little did they know that Cuomo sexual, well, that's what he is. Here, take a listen to the attorney general. News and pieces of evidence reveal a deeply disturbing yet clear picture. Governor Cuomo sexually harassed current and former state employees in violation of both federal and state laws. The independence investigation found that Governor Cuomo sexually harassed multiple women, many of whom were young women, by engaging in unwanted groping, kisses, hugging, and by making inappropriate comments. Further, the governor and his senior team took actions to retaliate against at least one former employee for coming forward with her story, her truth. And governor Cuomo's administration fostered a toxic workplace that enabled harassment and created a hostile work environment where staffers did not feel comfortable coming forward with complaints about sexual harassment due to a climate of fear well, do you think that's going to stop him? Do you think he's going to resign? Here's a little bit more from the press conference today. Break down as to what had happened, and they were the ones that reported the conduct to attorneys in the executive chamber. The governor also several times inappropriately touched a state trooper assigned to the unit to protect the governor. In an elevator, while standing behind the trooper, he ran his finger from her neck down her spine and said, hey, you. Another time, she was standing holding the door open for the governor. As he passed, he took his open hand and ran it across her stomach from her belly button to where she, the hip where she keeps her gun. She told us that she felt completely violated to have the governor touch her, as she put it, between her chest and her privates. The governor also inappropriately touched women who were attending work-related events at which the governor made remarks. At one event in September 2019, while having his picture taken with an employee of a state entity, the governor grabbed this young woman's butt. At another event in May of 2017, the governor pressed and ran his fingers across the chest of a woman while reading the name of her company, whose logo was on her chest. The governor also engaged in a widespread pattern of subjecting women to unwanted hugs and kisses and touching them in ways that made them uncomfortable. You know, it's something about these male feminists. Whenever someone says so noisily that they're a male feminist, well, there's just a chance that they're preemptively trying to head off your criticism of their actual sexual misconduct. I refer, of course, to Harvey Weinstein, the Democrat male feminist from Hollywood, and Bill Clinton, who's credibly been accused of rape. Well, 
uh, Andrew Cuomo, perhaps in concert with his CNN brother, Chris Cuomo, thought the best way to defend against these charges was to say, hey, I grope everybody. This is a video he released today. The New York Times published a front page picture of me touching a woman's face at a wedding and then kissing her on the cheek. That is not front page news. I've been making the same gesture in public all my life. I actually learned it from my mother and from my father. It is meant to convey warmth, nothing more. Indeed, there are hundreds, if not thousands of photos of me using the exact same gesture. I do it with everyone, black and white, young and old, straight and LGBTQ, powerful people, friends, strangers, people who I meet on the street. After the event, the woman told the press that she took offense at the gesture. And for that, I apologize. Another woman stated that I kissed her on the forehead at our Christmas party and that I said, ciao, Bella. Now, I don't remember doing it, but I'm sure that I did. I do kiss people on the forehead. I do kiss people on the cheek. I do kiss people on the hand. I do embrace people. I do hug people, men and women. I do on occasion say, ciao, Bella. On occasion, I do slip and say sweetheart or darling or honey. Yeah, I'm not sure if that works. That doesn't quite answer the way he treated the women as described by the investigations. Here to help figure this out is a lifelong New Yorker, our friend Pamela Geller, the author and editor of the GellerReport.com. Great to see you, Pamela. What do you make of this? Do you think he's going to brazen it out like so many Democrats before him? I don't think Andrew Cuomo is capable of not raising it out. I mean, listen, first of all, you have to understand the atmosphere, the zeitgeist in New York. New York politics is a sewer. It's not new. You have to understand this is the city of Tammany Hall and Boss Tweed. This is the city that actually voted to secede from the union to stand with the South. We have always politically been on the wrong side of history. And once again, we see power without accountability. The idea that he was grabbing asses, I'm sorry, that's what he was doing. I mean, we had a situation where a um, an overheard conversation between two macho guys became a cause celeb across the world over something that, let's say, President Trump said. This guy, uh, you know, there were 179 witnesses that testified in this investigation. Letitia James, who has made it her career to chase President Trump, she wants his tax returns and all this, uh, is not indicting. She says she believes this woman. They provided a report with ample proof, ample evidence. If not her, who? And, you know, it reminds me of when Michelle Obama held up a sign and tweeted it out, bring back our girls. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? You're the power. We tweet to you because we have no power. We just say, hey, hell, you're, you're in the White House. And the same thing goes with Governor Cuomo. This idea that I use the word sweetheart, we're not talking about that. He's a real predator. And when he was denying it, he, I couldn't help the hairs on my back, the back of my neck standing up because he literally sounded like those child pedophiles saying, she liked it, you know, I, I was making her happy. She loves me, she loves me, I was being gentle. It's like she wanted exactly the same thing. I, I, that he's not kicked out on his keister is indicative of the low state of this double standard. He calls it a political bias. This the man that demanded that Kavanaugh be investigated, that said, in a 2013 tweet that there should be a zero tolerance policy. He should be resigning. And the fact that his brother, Fredo, Chris Cuomo, drafted statements 
for, for his embattled brother, um, it, it honestly also points to a firing. He should absolutely be fired. But listen, the Crescent News Network, CNN, the corrupt news network, is never going to do the right thing or the decent thing. They don't have to. Yeah, they don't yeah. answer to anybody. And worse still is the the spineless, gutless uh, rhinos that do nothing. Even here in New York, you know, there's a congressional delegation that wants to remove him. But the Democrats won't even let the Republicans uh, parlay or be members of, of this commission. It's just, it's we're choking. We are hmm. choking to death under this yoke of totalitarianism. That's the only way it is. And those girls, they suffered for a long time because you know what? You have to be a martyr to the Democrat cause. We saw that when we saw these young BDS activists going over to Gaza and getting raped and getting molested, but they were told, don't say anything because it'll, it'll, it'll make them you know, it'll make them look bad. So you're supposed to sacrifice yourself in the cause of the, the Democrat agenda. It's hmm. to me, it, it was shocking. Her press conference, uh, Attorney General James, and then his denial. Uh, I, I'm sorry. It's just glaring. It's gl it's a glaring example to the American people of just how uh, double standard uh, uh, governance that we're suffering under. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.